Welcome back. This is Meet the Press. Australia's doctors have weighed in on the issue of our treatment of asylum seekers. Take a listen to this. The AMA believes that the system of mandatory detention of asylum seekers is inherently harmful to the physical and mental health of detainees. Well, AMA President Steve Hamilton joins us now. Uh, good morning, Dr. Hamilton. The, qu the key question, I guess, is how harmful is it to asylum seekers uh, to undergo mandatory detention? Well, it's enormously harmful. These are damaged people already coming into this country with all the problems that they bring with them. Uh, some have been through torture, some have, some have been uh, through physical health problems. But the mental health issues uh, are getting worse and worse the longer people are in detention. There are people who are, av who are there more than a year. Uh, there, are, there are children. There's about 350 children in detention currently. Uh, in Darwin alone, there's 179, and 81 of those are actually uh, unaccompanied, and they should not be there. Dr Hamilton, why is the AMA all of a sudden uh, exercised about this particular issue? I, I don't recall the AMA speaking out about this issue, which has been around for a long time, going back probably several decades. Look, we have a, a committee looking at... Uh, youth and child health and public health and they've really been concerned about this and also our paediatricians and our psychiatrists are actually giving us feedback and telling us about some of the terrible stories that we're hearing. We've had a child with a serious suicide attempt at nine and a half years of age. That is just shocking. We've got four and five year olds who are actually um, on hunger strikes with their parents. So what do you think the answer is that you think that these people should be out in the community almost immediately they arrive? Well, look, the problem is that uh, m many of these detention centres are in very remote locations and it's very difficult to get health services in there. Uh, in the community there's access to schools, there's access to, to good health care, there's access to good psychiatric support. Particularly for these children, they should be in the community. Dr Hamilton, moving on to another issue, the means testing of the 30% private health rebate likely to come before the parliament this week or in coming weeks. Does the AMA support the government's aims to introduce a means test? Look, this is a, this is a big issue. There's, we've got two major reports with different conclusions. One says it's going to cause an exodus from the private health insurance. One says it isn't. What we want to see is a balance. And in fact, we want to see a compensation package guaranteed before this goes before the parliament. So if in fact people do flood the public hospital system, there's money to make, to make up for that. That is one of the concerns raised, but particularly by medical specialists in regional areas, that if this goes ahead, There'll be a switch from private to public health. Private hospitals in, in the bush will close down, no longer be profitable. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, look, there are two lots of uh, research. Uh, our own assessment is more, uh, more aligned with the government's assessment. So you don't, think there will be, you don't think there will be a big switch from private to public if this is introduced? Our research doesn't show that, but we do want to make sure there's a compensation package ready to go before this legislation goes up. Well, what would be the dimensions of that compensation package and how would it work exactly? Well, look, if there is a shift into the public sector, we know our public hospitals are under pressure all around the country already. Uh, if there is a shift, uh, there's a great uh, amount of work being done in the private sector. If this goes to the public sector, those long waitings will blow out even longer. But are we talking about how much money here? And after all, this issue has been around for a couple of years. It's already been rejected by the Senator a couple of times. Surely uh, it, it needs to have... Um, we need more precision on it by now. Well, actually, with our health reform package, we're going to be able to measure what happens in, in, our, in our hospitals. We've got activity-based funding uh, through the federal government's health reforms. We'll be able to measure this and we'll be able to know uh, whether people are transferring from private to public. So that's got to be paid for. Dr Hamilton, you've raised the issue of the health reform agreement, which has just been signed by the Commonwealth and the states. But Julie Gillard has had to water down key aspects of this deal, particularly the one that Kevin Rudd uh, brought forward several years ago. Do you think the states really get it? And do you think there will be increased accountability or have the states got enough, uh, is there enough in this deal that allows the states to essentially get, a, get, uh, get away from that level of uh, responsibility? Look, there's no doubt that the states are squarely in charge of health once again and that's the difference between the Kevin Rudd package. We do see that there's increased uh, transparency. That is very important so we can measure who's doing what. We know that um, there'll be a single funding pool 
and we'll be able to measure where that actually translates into services. So there is a, certainly the states are squarely in charge of health again. We need to keep them accountable. Would you like to see the system ultimately move to a single funder to something, or at least to something like Kevin Rudd was proposing, which would have the Commonwealth in a very dominant position? Well, certainly that was our uh, policy from the beginning, that there be a single funder for health to end the blame game, so, to make sure that there's one level of government accountable for health care, to make sure sufficient money was going in, sufficient beds were available to treat patients so, so we could get those waiting lists down. This is just a step along the road. You think that governments in the future should do more to go down that path? Well, we have a, a, a way forward that we can actually, uh, I guess, hold the states accountable now, but I suspect that uh, the blame game has changed, but not entirely gone. Okay, uh, Dr. Steve Hamilton, we, uh, we do thank you for joining us uh, today uh, from Brisbane.